has swagger like the birds. Swaggers like the birds. Swagger, swaggers like the birds. No one in the club swagger, swaggers like the birds. Swagger, swaggers like the birds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of John Amel's Archives where, as you can tell, things are just a little bit different today. Michael Vick has learned the playbook, and yes, John Amel, in fact, has caught his full swagger back and is ready for the 2010 season. Did somebody say he was retiring from YouTube? Whoa, 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 whoa. Not so fast, not so fast. Call me a bandwagon hopper. Call me a bitch. Say I need, don't eat crow. Don't watch my videos. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because the Philadelphia Eagles are once again the team to beat in the NFC East, baby. So says Michael Vick. Now, let's go back to my video last week where I said Kevin Cobb's got two more games at the most before Michael Vick takes over his, his, his starting spot. It didn't even come down to two more games. Andy Reid, who oftentimes I criticize, I would like to thank for once you have stepped up and made the right decision. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a feeling that for the first time in Eagle Andy Reid history, Jerry, Lo Je Je Jerry Lurie put his foot down and actually made Andy Reid do the quarterback switch because the guy just came out on Monday and proclaimed that Kevin Cobb, regardless of uh, Mike Vick's play, was the quarterback of the future. And then all of a sudden, he switches his, his in entire, entire thought process by the next day and... That's unlike Andy Reid. So what I think happened is Jerry Lurie took him, Jeffrey Lurie took him in the room, said, I want Mike Vick to start. And so somebody did it. Whoever did it, thank you, Eagle Brass, for stepping up and having the balls. Mike Vick, and I have said this from day one, deserves every bit the shot that Kevin Cobb deserved. Kevin Cobb, this is Kevin Cobb's fourth year on the team, and he still doesn't look like an NFL-ready quarterback. And Mike Vick's stats speak for it all. The guy's got a 104.5 quarterback rating. His completion percentage is 64%. He's got 460 yards passing, 140 yards rushing, three touchdowns. More importantly, no turnovers in six quarters of football. So I say that regardless, you can't bench a guy putting up those kind of numbers. It looks to me, and there's a lot of Mike Vick haters out there, a lot of people saying some really relevant stuff, actually, um, that Mike Vick, you know, his completion percentage has always been bad, and he's, a, he's not a franchise quarterback, and he's a run-first quarterback. you got to understand, this is the first time that Michael Vick is actually on a team uh, with, a, with a good coaching staff. He's under a good system. He's been doing nothing but learning the playbook for the last 26 months, uh, studying. He doesn't go out and party anymore, and Michael Vick is, is looking to turn it around and under the guidance of Andy Reid and a good coaching system you know under Atlanta he was quoted as saying he was the last person to show up for practice and the first one to leave he was lazy he was immature uh, never played up to his full potential but under Andy Reid and uh, Mordenweg and the rest of the Eagles staff this guy could be a potential top five quarterback in the NFL they always said that if Michael Vick studied and uh, study the playbook when he first started, or if he was under somebody like Bill Belichick, that uh, he'd probably be the best player in the NFL. So, um, so John Amel was right once again. Uh, you could go back to uh, LeBron James, Michael Jordan. I, I posted a video. I was right. I, Michael Jordan came out a week later, uh, said that he, that uh, LeBron James made a terrible move by doing going to Miami. I called the Super Bowl winner last year, Saints over the Colts. Uh, naming Tom Brady the better quarterback, said Aaron Rodgers should start over uh, uh, Brett Favre in 2005. And once again, John Amell has called another bombshell. I told you guys it was going to happen. I told all you guys with your stupid little Kevin Cobb comments on my page, uh, blah, 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 give him a chance, blah, 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 blah. No, the guy doesn't get a chance. McNabb should have never been off the offense in the first place. And thank God for Andy Reid's sake, for his job's sake, that Michael Vick is stepping up and uh, actually taking it to another level right now, or else Andy Reid would have made one of the biggest coaching debacles in the history of football. And that being said, uh, under Andy Reid's guidance, I believe that Michael Vick actually 
can be a better quarterback than Donovan McNabb ever was. Um, and I might be wrong, and I, Donovan McNabb is still my favorite Philadelphia, uh, Phil, uh, Philadelphia Eagle of all time, so don't get me wrong. Um, still his number one fan, but the fact of the matter is, Michael Vick, I've he played outstanding. I mean, he, he didn't miss a beat. Uh, he was staying in the pocket. He was looking downfield. He, he, he was throwing before running. You can't bench a guy with a 104.5 quarterback rating. So uh, this is a message out to the rest of the NFC East. The Philadelphia Eagles are back, bitches. So, you know, I'm going to take a woo one time for my boy Pizzle. Uh, none of you guys got any work for us. I'll tell you what, in 11 days when the Philadelphia Eagles meet uh, Donovan McNabb and the Redskins, if you were to ask me two weeks ago with Kevin Cobb in there, there might have been a little piece of John Ammo rooting for McNabb and the Redskins because I hate Kevin Cobb. But now that Andy Reid and Je Jeffrey Lurie and the Eagles did the right move, they put the best man for the position at the quarterback spot. I love this guy. Um, I'm, I'm fully on board, and I hope Mike Vick, I hope Super 7 dominates Big 5. Sorry, McNabb, but uh, my loyalty lies with the birds. Um... Now, uh, so you got the, the Giants are sputtering. You guys all saw big brother Peyton Manning, uh, you know, sticks it to Eli. Uh, it's a wide open division. Andy Reid saw that. The Dallas Cowboys. Now, for all you guys who might have picked the Dallas Cowboys to win the division or go to the playoffs, I say the same thing every year. Sometimes they have potential to be a good regular season team, but at the end of the day, their coach sucks. Tony Romo's a choke artist, and there's no chem there's no team chemistry there. Dallas Cowboys lost in a last second uh, attempt against the Red Redskins in Week One. They could barely muster up uh, one touchdown, and now they come out and lose against the Chicago Bears. It's it's just embarrassing, man. You guys are now officially in last place in the NFL. You sorry, sorry. Texas Hicks and that's it man so once again Mike Vick is the future quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles Kevin Cobb will never play another game again for the birds he's gonna be on the Cleveland Browns pretty soon don't be surprised uh, Mike Vick is actually the quarterback of the future like I told you guys last week when I made that video and all you stupid people commented all your stupid posts about Kevin Cobb and about the Dallas Cowboys, and once again, I told you that the Dallas Cowboys suck. And that's why you guys are in last place, just like you were almost every other time, except for maybe last year. You guys are a joke. You coughed up one Super Bowl win, and now you're done. So obscure into an oblivion. Get off my page. Stop your hating. John Amos got his swagger back. I don't care what you say. I duck and run. I retire. I unretire. I don't eat crow. I don't give a fuck. Eagles, playoffs, possible Super Bowl 2010. Who would have thought in their right minds that John Amo would say that? This is, this is Amo Archives is out.